proteins and no movement. <laughs> so I want to tell you about the secret of life right now. Secret of life, okay? Uh, spotlight, okay, secret of life. <laughs> I'm going to show it to you. And don't be mad at me because it's so simple it will probably irritate you, okay? Here's how it works. This is a backbone. And just like a human backbone, the amino acids are like vertebrae. Guess what I can do with my backbone? I can twist it, flex it, rotate it, change my shape. Ah! Protein, backbone. Flex, rotate, twist, change shape. Ah, the question is this. But in the body, protein has a conformation or shape that it prefers. And I'm going to show you two shapes, and I'm going to ask you which one of these uh, shapes would be preferred by my protein. But before I do that, I give you one fact. The two yellow amino acids at the end are negatively charged. Yellow and yellow, negative. I'm going to show you two shapes. You tell me which is more stable. Shape one, shape two. The reason simply, like charges repel each other, so this is stable. Okay, now I introduce the secret of life. The polystyrene ball. <laughs> what does it represent? I'll tell you what it represents. An environmental signal. What's an environmental signal? And the answer is a chemical, a drug, a hormone, a growth factor. Those are chemical environmental signals. But what other kind of signals are there? Well, especially in this group, you should start to realize that we don't have to focus on the physical reality because other signals are just energy fields. And this is what the quantum physics was all about. Quantum physics says energy doesn't have to be material. It could be wave-like functions going through the field. Okay? So the relevance is, well, I can't show you an invisible field. I'll use this model and say both chemical and invisible fields will do the same thing. So let me show you with the chemical. Now here's the, here's the secret part of this. What's the charge here at the yellow? Okay, now here's this. This chemical is positively charged, but on a quantity level, quantity, there's more positive charge in this polystyrene ball than there is negative charge in the yellow amino acid. You got that? Okay, now watch. The ball, the drug, the hormone is coming through the environment, gets near the protein. What's going to happen when this gets close? They attract, positive and negative, right? The signal binds. What's the charge here? What's the charge here? Is this more stable or is this one more stable? Now watch what happens. If the signal comes off, what's the protein going to do now? Move back. That's the secret of life. Okay. <laughs> what's the secret of life? The secret of life is this. The proteins give you your physical body. They're the building blocks. But life comes from the fact that the proteins can change shape. But to change shape, you need more than the protein. You need the, the signal. Okay? So now when we look at this, we go and we say, how does it work? Well, let's give a model. My proteins are gears. That there's the equivalent of a lock. And that certain proteins have certain keys. The keys are the environmental signals. So when the signal isn't bound to the protein, nothing's happening. But at some point, if the signal binds to the protein, it's like the polystyrene ball, boom, it causes the motion, the gears move, the function is carried out. If the signal detaches, the motion stops. I can control the action by whether I provide the signal or take away the signal. The environment offers the signals. So the environment is controlling the action. The genes are blueprints to make the parts, but the genes alone don't say when the parts are going to be used or why or how. It's the environment that does that, okay? So uh, we go back to CalModulin, the space fill version, the backbone version. Let me just show you. This is the actual movement of CalModulin in the body when it responds to a calcium signal. And this is the actual movement. And this, you may say, well, it's only just did it a little like this. What, what big deal? When you have like a million proteins and they're all moving a little tiny bit, collectively, it creates life. Every one of them has its own little action. So, here's the summary of biology. You now have enough biology to understand life, and it goes like this. You are made out of protein. But the protein gives you your structure. A cadaver is all protein. What's a cadaver missing? The signals. Okay? Well, why is the signal important? Because the signal comes from the environment. But what are the signals? Well, to use a term that uh, Lynn McTaggart's book describes, the field. I'll talk about the field, the environment. Where's the environment? From you 
to the end of the universe. That's the environment. The signals come from that. Medicine says all signals have to be molecules because medicine is Newtonian and it believes the body is a physical device made out of physical parts that interact with physical parts. Newtonian physics doesn't entertain the concept of invisible energy fields influencing things. This is why if molecules are the signals and signals control protein, why do you think they sell drugs? Drugs are molecules that are supposed to be signals to control your functions. And they stick with that. Unfortunately, they're totally out of date scientifically by about 80 years. And the reality is you better bring energy into the picture because energy reveals itself to be pure energy versus physical chemicals are 100 times more effective in transmitting information than our chemicals. And that when we return the energy that controls the body, that would essentially be the vital forces that people talked about years ago, that there's a vital force, an energy running through your body. Yes, it is, and it's quantum physics is involved with that. And the relevance, if you can't see it, medicine doesn't want to talk about it. And so they don't. And they just stick with the molecules. Why? Not because medicine wants to stick with the molecules. It's the pharmaceutical industry that sells them, and they control the medical industry. So the point is you want to get out of that chemical business. And the fact is, well, how does life work? But I showed you how life works. Signal joins protein, makes behavior. You saw it. Signal plus protein equals movement. Movement is generating behavior. The movement is used to do work. Now the issue is, now that you understand how life works, then I say, yeah, but what if you, your behavior is off? We call it a disease, a dis-ease. It's not working right. Now you already have all the information to answer this question. If you were expressing a disease, what can you attribute it to? There's only two things. Take the arrow backwards. It's either the proteins are screwed up or the signals are screwed up. Well, what's the relevance about that? Well, when it comes to the protein, if you have defects in making your proteins, those are called birth defects, and that's less than 5% of the population on this planet can tell you legitimately, my life doesn't work well because I got defective proteins. That means 95% of the population cannot use that excuse. And if those people in that 95% are sick and express a dis-ease, we can't go back and blame it on the proteins. Then what's left? The signal. So I said, well, yeah, but how can a signal mess up? Well, I'm going to show you there's only three ways a signal can mess up. Number one, the first thing is trauma. If I fall off the podium right here and wrench my back and my spinal cord gets all wrenched around and the signal can't go from my brain down to the rest of the parts of my body, of course the signal's messed up. Of course I'm going to have a disease. So trauma is one source, interfering with the passage of the signal. Second, and the second is toxins. Yes, if you put chemicals in your body that are not supporting the propagation of the signals in a good way or distort the signal, then the toxins interfere with your life. Therefore, avoid eating all the garbage that the mass producers are making. Organic foods, natural things, get back to them without all the exogenous chemicals that are distorting the system. And now the third and the most important influence on dis-ease is infecting the signal is thought. Auto-suggestion. Why is it relevant? Relevance is simply this. There is nothing wrong with the biological system. What's wrong is that the signals are inappropriate and they're being sent at a wrong time or just the inappropriate signal responding to the world. Why is that relevant? Because there's nothing physically wrong with you. But you may show a disease. But the disease has no physical correlation that there's a cause. It has to do with your mind and bringing the mind back into the picture. If you like Succeed with Knowledge, subscribe and give us a thumbs up. And thanks a million. Cheers.